Oh, you know that theme song. Mm-hmm. It means it's time now for Sunday House Call. And joining us this morning, Dr. David Samadhi, the Vice Chairman of the Department of Urology, Chief of Robotics at the Mount Sinai Medical Center. And Dr. Mark Siegel, who's Associate Professor of Medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center and the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Good morning, Docs. Good morning, Great guys. To Good to see you. Eric just scared everybody. I, I tell you, they talk about this thing. Have you heard about it? The superbug? There's some new warnings that's showing up at hospitals across the country. Here's what we know right now. 42 states are reporting that they have at least one patient who suffers from the superbug. It is most common in the Northeast. And they say it's increased from 1% to 4% over the last 10 years and kills up to half the patients who get it in their bloodstream. So, Dr. Samadhi, what is the superbug? How many are there? And what do we do to protect ourselves from becoming a victim. Well, the last seg- segment, the, the sentence that you mentioned, the fact that half of the people die from this and we have zero antibiotic treatment to treat this, that's what, it, what CDC calls it, the superbug or nightmare bug. And what it really is, they call it the CRE, and the name of it is carbopenem, which is one of the most aggressive antibiotics that we've had. Carbopenem, just so you know, compared to all these other antibiotics that we have, is the real nuclear bomb. It's a missile that should wipe out any kind of bug that we have. Now we have carbopenem resistance, so it doesn't work anymore, and it's one of these enterobacteria, E. coli or Klebsiella. Now, you've heard of MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. We've heard of C. diff. These are the bugs that... Oh, what's that? C. difficile are okay. the ones that cause like diarrhea. These are all what we call nosocomial, so infections that we get in the hospitals. These bugs are around. They become more and more resistant because doctors are writing more antibiotics and their bugs are getting smarter and that's what happens. Now, when they are in the GI system, in our, in our gut, it's no big deal. Once they get into our blood system, they get into soft tissue, now we have a huge problem because the antibiotics won't work. 42 states, half of the people can actually die. But let me explain to you that we don't want to scare people. This is not something that you would see in the community soon. This is only mostly in the ICU, critical units, CCUs. Patients that are very old have had ventilations or catheters for a long time, and that's one of the reasons why we're worried about this. Now, this so basically is you, you're not going to get it if you're at home. Basically, you basically it's in the hospital, and if you're in the hospital for a while, which is what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. Now, this bacteria, this. But it, it actually worries me because it can spread resistance to another bacteria. That's another thing it does. And it has a survival advantage, meaning that it's the resistant bacteria that are going to live if they're faced with the antibiotics that they're trying to overcome. So if we overuse antibiotics in the hospital, we create this problem. If we don't disinfect the hospitals sufficiently, we create this problem. If the drug companies don't come up with new antibiotics, which they don't have a financial incentive for doing anymore, doesn't make them enough money, we create this problem. So that's the, th- the thing we're faced. There but, are actually no, some treatments, that, by the way. There are some treatments. Before we get to that, the Joint Commission, which is the organization that goes from hospital to hospital to make sure that it is clean, that they aren't overusing a- antibiotics, why, isn't, why is this even arising? Why, are they not doing their job? Well, I think they're doing their job, but of course a lot of this goes unreported, Jamie. A lot of hospitals don't report sufficiently, and in many states they don't have to when these infections. So we're actually under-reporting it today. It's much worse than so it is. So how do we protect but, ourselves? Well, well, what, well, what do we do to protect ourselves? We're in the hospital. Actually, do, 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 just just jump in so for, and just make a what, comment what, about this, Jayco. I think you know your point is well taken. I think they're looking at the hospitals very carefully. These infections causes red flags and all the hospitals and professionals are working well together to make sure and their hospitals for example I read about Montefiore their rate of infection as a result of this went down from 40 percent to zero the way to do this is CDC is coming up with what they call detect and prevent so what does it mean if a patient transferred to the hospital you need and they're CRE contaminant you have to put them on contact isolation if you go in you gotta wear a mask you gotta wear gowns if you go and visit your family member make sure you're not touching a lot and hand hygiene is a way to go mm-hmm. now when it comes to doctors I think Mark will tell you getting the patients off ventilators getting those catheters out mm-hmm. not writing for too much antibiotics we used to give seven days of antibiotics for urinary tract infection three days is more than yeah. enough Dr. And Siegel's a big it's, proponent it's, it's, of not overusing I, I want to actually make it several points yeah. about the hospital number one the reason that this is happening is it's on a case-by-case basis it's up to every doctor 
to wear gloves when they go to every patient. It's up to infection disease surveillance to get the patients isolated when they have this. You've got to start screening people. We do this with MRSA. We've got to screen people to see if they're contaminated with this bacteria. Then we've got to isolate them. That's why it's spreading. Now, it's not in the community yet. But MRSA did get out into the gyms in the community, and that's where this is going next. Mm. So we really, and it's in nursing homes, we really have mm. to clamp down on this now. Some of the points David made on how to do that is we, we have to do it on an individual basis, and we have to do it on a systemic basis. Okay, so we got to uh, be careful, wash your hands and all that when you're in the hospital. Yeah, and, you can, and quickly, there you, are can, antibiotics. you can treat it. You don't yeah. have, those people don't have to die. Absolutely. Genomycin treats it, aminoglycosides treat it, an antibiotic called cholestatin yeah. treats it, several. Okay, you, you can just ask your doctor. When don't they ask come me to, to pronounce you, any yeah. of those. Yeah, exactly. Wash <laughs> your hands. That's For very sure. Oh, ask your doctor. To ask your doctor. Yeah. I mean, it sounds awkward, but now because of this, everybody should be aware of washing their hands. Because you can carry it from one patient right. to another. Don't be right. afraid to ask.